Hi, welcome back. I'm Mrs. Wilson. Yesterday, we explored the idea of a multiplicative comparison, that a multiplication equation can show a comparison between numbers. It was like if you had a group of five stars, and then you drew three times as many, and that was 15 stars. Well, today you're going to work on writing an equation to represent a multiplicative comparison word problem. Doesn't that sound fancy? I'll be with you every step of the way so you can develop a strategy for solving multiplicative comparison word problems. You'll need your student work text open to page 125 or a piece of paper, and you'll need a pencil. I'll pause while you gather up those supplies. We're going to start by making sense of the problem. Janelle's Market sells bags of eight oranges. Simone needs five times that amount. Write and solve an equation to find the number of oranges that Simone needs. Hmm, what's this problem about? Pause the recording and write what you think this problem is about. Maybe you said something about oranges? Great. <laughs> I'm going to read it again, and then you're going to pause to write what we're trying to find out. Here we go. Janelle's Market sells bags of eight oranges. Simone needs five times that amount. Write and solve an equation to find the number of oranges that Simone needs. So let's pause it and you write down what we're trying to find out. Did you say something about writing an equation to find the number of oranges? Sure, you're on the right track. Now I want you to read it the third time and you're gonna write down the important information. Go ahead and pause. For the important information, did you write one bag has eight oranges and Simone needs five times that amount or something like that? Great thinking. Now, you're going to have some time to work the problem on your own in your work text. Think about how this is similar to the ones you did yesterday. What do we know and what is unknown? What math symbol will you use? Can you use a model like we worked with yesterday and apply it here? I want you to notice that math toolkit. Counters and cups, number lines, multiplication models, grid paper, sticky notes. You could choose any of those tools listed there. That'll be helpful to you. And if you can think of a second way to solve it, solve it that way too. That'd be awesome. Please pause the video and solve the problem on your own. And when you're finished, Press play. I want you to look back at your work and I want you to think, think about this question. Why did you choose this strategy? There were many different ways to solve it. What made your way a good way to solve it? Did you make a picture or a model that was clear and easy to understand? Did you find a way that was especially efficient? I want you to find a family member and share with them how you solved the problem. And maybe you can use the suggestion on the slide when you're explaining. You could say, I knew such and such, so I such and such. I want you to pause the video and hit play when you're finished. All right, let's look at some other ways to solve the problem. And as we go through them, think about how they're similar or different from how you did it. So I read the problem. Janelle's Market sells bags of eight oranges. Simone needs five times that amount. Write and solve an equation to find the number of oranges that Simone needs. So I knew that there were eight oranges in one bag. So I wrote it down. And I knew that Simone needs five times that amount. Does Simone need five oranges? No, she needs five times that amount. OK, so I thought of it like this. I saw it said five times. See where I circled the five? So I wrote one, two, three, four, five in a column right there. 
Then I knew each of those times needed an eight by it. Why? Because one bag, one eight, wouldn't be enough oranges. She needed five eights. So I wrote those eights in another column. Then I added up those eights and I got 40. I used repeated addition, didn't I? And you know what multiplication is. It's super fast repeated addition. Let's take a look at your work text, page 126 for the first model it. Maybe this was one of the ways you thought about it. It's a bar model. And I want you to notice the red and blue color coding. In the top row of the bar model, the red square shows that there are eight oranges in one bag. What about the second row? How many blue squares are there? Let's count those blue squares together. Ready? One, two, three, four, five. Now, why are there five blue squares? I want you to pause now so you can explain that out loud. Did you say something like there are five blue squares with eights in them because Simone needs five times as many as are in one bag? That's using the old brain. What about that question mark under the bar model? What does it represent? Hmm, I'm thinking of a word that starts with a U. Second letter is an N. I want you to pause and write down that word. Did you write that the question mark represents the word, say it with me, unknown? And that's what we're trying to find, the unknown number of oranges. Now, if you have a book, I want you to underline the words skip count right there under the bar model. If you don't have a book, just point to those words here on the screen. Read the numbers that Simone skip counted with me. Here we go. 8, 16, 24, 32, 40. Just a reminder about skip counting. Think of it like a number line. Here, I'm showing one jump of eight. That's one jump of eight. Oh, wait, that sounds like a multiplication problem to me. Yeah, one times eight gets me to eight on the number line. One times eight equals eight. And here I made how many jumps? Let's count them. One, two, three, four, five. Yep, five jumps of eight each. That's five times eight. And that got us to where on the number line? Yep, 40. So skip counting is the same thing as knowing your multiplication facts. Well, of course, you could have counted on your fingers. Ah, that's scary. <laughs> Here, let's take a look at another strategy and compare. How you can use the bar model to make an equation to help understand the problem. Five times oranges in one bag equals total oranges needed. How is it helpful that an equation is first written with words? I want you to pause and talk out loud about how the words are helpful. Well, I know for me, it helps me to turn the proper mathematical language, I call it mathglish, into English. And then I can model it better in my head. I want you to find the red words oranges in one bag and the blue words total oranges needed. Point to the symbol that's in between them. And I want you to talk out loud not only what that symbol is called, but why is it used here? I'll pause while you talk that out loud. That equal sign means that whatever is on the left of five times as many oranges in one bag is the same as what's on the right side, the total oranges needed. I think of an equal sign like a seesaw or a teeter-totter. Have you ever been on one and you get it, the people on both sides just right so that the teeter-totter is straight across? It's balanced. That means equal. And that's what an equal sign is. Let's read the next sentence. 
The number of oranges in one bag is known. It's eight. The total number of oranges needed is unknown. Hey, there's that unknown word again. How are they showing the unknown at the bottom of this slide? Point to it. Yeah, it's the empty box. Why? Pause here so you can jot down some ideas. Did you say something like it's what we're trying to find out, the total number of oranges? Or maybe you remembered from earlier and just put a question mark. Smart. So remember that number line from earlier? Now I want you to look at the equation right above it. Five times eight equals unknown. All right, now on the number line, where do you see a five? And I don't mean the fives on the number line itself. I'm being tricky here. I'll pause. Yeah, there are five jumps, right? Do you see an eight on the number line? I'll pause. Well, okay, there are a lot of eights on the number line, but I bet you knew that I meant the jumps of eight each, right? Mm-hmm. And now, what about the unknown? Do you see that on the number line? I'll pause. Yep, it's where that last jump of eight ends at the 40. Good job. Before we leave this, let's look at those jumps where each one ends. The first jump of eight ends at eight. The second one ends at 16. Read the next ones with me. Ready? 24, 32, 40. And do you remember this example from earlier? Look again where I wrote, she needs five times that amount. And then I wrote the numbers one, two, three, four, five. Well, that's like the five jumps I made on the number line, right? I bet you know what I'm going to ask next. Yep. What about the eights? What is this column of eights like back on the number line? I'll pause while, while you either write that down or talk about it out loud. Did you say the column of eights is like every jump on the number line? Mm -hmm. And it was a jump of eight, something like that. And I have the answer of 40 oranges circled on my work here. And where did that last jump of eights end up on the number line? Say it with me, 40. Awesome. Now, what about this scary picture of me counting on my fingers? I'm showing eight fingers, sure. But how would I show five groups of eight? I'll pause while you consider that. Yep. If you said that I'd run out of fingers and toes pretty quickly because I only have a total of 20, I'd agree with you. But what if I use the five fingers on one hand? Do you see where I'm going with this? The five jumps on the number line? Pause and talk out loud how you could use just five fingers to solve this problem. Did you think of skip counting? Yep, here's eight, 16, 24, 32, and 40. Well, now it's time for you to answer the seven connected questions on your own. Take your time and refer back to the work you already did on the model it examples. That'll help you make sense of the questions. And notice here for number five, you not only have to fill in that blank, you need to write an equation too. Here's your last connected question. When you finished all seven connected questions, have a grown up check over your work and then you can answer the apply it questions on your own. The apply it questions are numbered eight and number nine. Remember to look back at what we did together today. It'll help you. I hope you had as much fun as I did. Be persistent problem solvers, and I'll see you back here tomorrow. Kiss your brains.